Magia, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another DVD slash Blu-ray slash VHS update for March of 2016. Uh, yeah, not the biggest update in the world, but I think it's pretty much all quality, so that's always a plus, quality over quantity. Yeah, you can't beat it, right? Um, so we might as well get right into this. First off, just want to charge everyone for clicking on the video. Yeah, Chars. Alrighty, so I'm gonna start off with the uh, I'm gonna start off with the VHS that I got. Um, I only picked up three. Uh, I don't really go out of my way to find VHS unless um, I'm like specifically like totally gunning for something. But I actually came across two of these uh, completely by accident. My buddy owns a shop, and he he someone had dropped these off at his store, and so he held them for me. Pretty fucking awesome stuff. Um, first up here is the VHS of Willard. Now, I wanted to grab the, this because it does not have a DVD or Blu-ray release, uh, which is just such a shame that it doesn't. Um, yeah, awesome film. I've reviewed this one before on one of my Killer Rat. I think my first Killer Rat theme week on my channel, but really cool find, find Willard. I was very stoked. It's like in mint shape. Really, really good shape. Yeah, I can't beat that. Uh, and then, of course, picked up the sequel. Uh, ben, this is just fantastic. Absolutely amazing to find. This was such a good find. So, um, yeah, Ben, really good stuff here. Right there again, all in really good shape. You really can't beat that. So, yeah. And then last up for the VHS, I grabbed this because this DVD is like really out of print and I don't even know if it's going to get a re-release anytime soon. It's been out of print for a lot of years actually. It goes for really stupid money. And the thing is, it's not even the greatest film in the world. It's like a sequel in one of the hugest franchises out there right now. And that's the Amityville Dollhouse film. I believe this is part... I think this is part six or five. I don't even... I can't even remember. Um, I haven't seen it in years. Um, I don't really quite remember, but... But this was a good price. I only got this for five or six dollars and it's still sealed. So can't beat that. Pretty cool stuff. So that is gonna do it for <laughs> the VHS is not really a whole lot, but like I said, I don't go out of my way to find these things on a regular basis, so it is what it is, right? Yeah. Alright, let's get into the DVDs. Fucking goddamn fucking dog, man. Yeah, moving along into the DVDs. Alrighty, so. No. Alrighty, moving into the DVDs, of course. And first up here is a brand new film just got released. And for the people that watch my channel regularly, you know that I'm a really big fan of anything to do with Frankenstein. So every time like a, a, like a modern, modern uh, adaptation of Frankenstein comes out, I always got to pick it up or at least check it out. And uh, so, of course, this one came out, and I didn't really know much about it, and then I kind of did a little bit of research, and I noticed that Bernard Rosa directed this film, of course, he directed uh, Candyman, and that got my interest rolling right there, piqued my interest, and I had to check it out, and of course, it is called Frankenstein, uh, with Carrie Ann Moss, Tony Todd's in this one, Xavier Samuel, um, but uh, I have to say, this is probably my favorite film of the year that I've seen so far. Um, I did a full-length review of this on the podcast. It's not up yet. It'll be up in a couple days after this is up. And, um, yeah, I really enjoyed this film. It's a really cool modern-day telling of the Frankenstein story, all told through um, through Frankenstein, or through Frankenstein, through the monster. In this case, his name is actually Adam. Um, but it's just a really unique take on it. It's very heartfelt. It's very well done. Really enjoyed this film, with the exception of a couple scenes here and there. This thing was pretty damn good, so give it a shot if you're into Frankenstein. Even if you're not, you might really enjoy it. It's just a very modernized, very interesting way to tell the story. So, uh, moving along with the 2016 releases, uh, it's another one I reviewed uh, last week on what we watched on the podcast, episode 75. So, if you want to check that out, you can. Uh, and that is called um, this one's called Intruders. Uh, basically, a about um, you know a woman with agoraphobia, and uh, she gets invaded 
due to circumstances by telling someone that she has got some money hidden in the house. And yeah, and then of course the tides get turned a little bit and um, she kind of goes AWOL on these guys a little bit. So pretty, it's a pretty interesting premise. It's, it's a pretty decent film. I thought it was pretty cool. Definitely check out the review. Uh, next up here is the brand new Necrostorm film. Now I was really stoked to check this out because I'm a really big fan of the film Mold. Have you seen the indie film Mold that came out a few years back? Um, basically what this film is right here, it's called The Mildew from Planet uh, Zan Zanar. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Basically what this is, it's uh, um, Giulio De Santi's version of that film. He took that movie and kind of recut it and put in, spliced in his own new footage and things like that. So if you know the mold story, you know exactly what you're getting into with this one, but it's got a brand new, a bunch of brand new footage and stuff in there. And it's really gory, of course, in Necro Necrostorm fashion. Um, I really enjoyed this. I thought this was a really cool cut of the film. I thought it was fantastic. Really, It blended well together. I think it, the footage that he shot and the way he incorporated, or kind of did the story and stuff, I thought it was really cool. So, yeah, give this one a shot if you're into Necrostorm stuff. Uh, if you don't know Necrostorm, um, basically the films that they've done are like, you know, Adam Chaplin, Hotel Inferno, Tater City, things like that, Judy. Um, yeah, among films. So give it a shot. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, next up here is a, uh, a film I've actually been after for quite a while because I knew it was out of print and I'd never seen this one around ever. And then randomly went into my buddy's shop when they had it sitting on the shelf and I was like, that's pretty cool. Two bucks, grab Jigsaw, Jigsaw. And I know this one is out of print and going for stupid money. I actually seen this on the Code Red uh, cartel site and it was selling for like 20 bucks or some crazy shit. But um, I did a full length review for this on Body Bags if you want to check that out. Um, yeah, of course it's the slasher film right there. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, next up is another uh, film from the Amityville series, and that's called The Am Amityville Curse. This is part five, I believe. Uh, this movie's fucking terrible, really, really terrible. But the thing is, with this movie, it's the only one in the franchise that doesn't have a Region 1 release. Uh, so I had to pick up the Region 2 release, the UK release, but oddly enough, this one's actually all Region anyways. So, um, And it cost me one penny, and that's pretty much what it's worth. This movie is really, really terrible, but I'm trying to collect all the Amityville films. Now I just need the four modern ones that came after the remake. I just need those ones. So I've got everything else, but yeah, Amityville Curse. It is what it is, man. It's not a great film. But for a penny, gotta collect it. Um, next up here from Dark Sky Films is one I've been after for years from 1964, and it's called Slaughter of the Vampires. Um, yeah, I did a full-length review for this one on uh, the podcast that we recorded yesterday. So, like I said, it'll be up on that one, episode 76. Uh, pretty cool film, man. Very kind of gothic-type Italian film. Um, yeah, pretty cool stuff. You like your vampire films from Dark Sky. I really like these old releases that Dark Sky does. They don't really release a lot of stuff like this anymore. They kind of release more of uh, modern uh, films, which which isn't a bad thing, but uh, I do prefer them to release these things. But Slaughter of the Vampires. Uh, next up here from Dark Sky Films. Uh, I've had this one in my wish list for so long. For so long, I was just like, you know what, fuck it. I'm just going to pick away at all the films that I've been, you know, trying to collect from these certain companies and stuff. And that's College Girl Murders. Uh, I haven't yet watched this one. Um, I believe this is a German film. I think it's a German film. I believe it's also dubbed in English. I think that's how it goes. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but it seems pretty cool, man. I think it's from either the late 60s or early 70s or something. But... You know, the premise sounds pretty cool. I've got to check it out. So, College Girl, Ma College Girl Massacre, College Girl Murders. Uh, next up here from Unearth Films is uh, another one I've had in my wish list for so long. Uh, Band in Germany. This one's called da, Das Kombrutel Duel. Probably butchered the shit out of that because I don't speak German. At all. Oddly enough, my background actually is Austrian, but uh, I don't know a lick of German at all. Um, but, yeah, I've... I've Wanted to check this one out for a while. You know, Unearth Films can be very, very hit and miss with their films. This one looks pretty cool. I mean, you know, gore, gore-tastic, but banned in Germany. Doesn't really mean a whole lot because there's they have, like, major bad censorship laws there to last, you know, while. <laughs> so, who knows? We'll see. It's probably pretty gory, though. Uh, got it. Picked up another Tartan Asian Extreme film. Now, this was a recommendation from uh, my boy Tom Horsball and my boy Derek also. He picked up the Blu-ray. I think the third window Blu-ray this. Uh, I didn't really feel like importing it was like, I could get this one for like eight or nine dollars or something. So, and I'm fine with the DVD. That's, that's fine with me. And it's called A Snake of June. Now, I had no idea that this movie came out in 2002 or else I would have went after it earlier 
and uh, you know possibly watch this for the 2002 show that we did on the podcast, but. It is what it is, man. Uh, still sealed. Haven't checked it out. This is pretty much next on my watch list. I want to really check this one out. So, yeah. A Snake of June. Pretty cool title. And last up for the DVDs. That's right. I only picked up like 10 DVDs this month. So, um, is one that I actually couldn't believe I found in my buddy's shop because it was. I didn't realize what it was at first, and then I started thinking about it, and I was like, oh shit, I have this in my wish list right now. It's from the director that did that did Here Comes the Devil and. Uh, uh, Penumbra and, and among films he did like a whole pile of really cool films this is one of his earlier ones and it's called 36 pesos and it's basically about I think these girls that get kidnapped and they're like 36 paces from freedom kind of thing um, so it's kind of one of those capture and torture type films I believe but I've heard really good things it's won a lot of awards and you know so I'm very interested I do like I always butcher this guy's name Adrian Garcia Bogliano something like that I don't know terrible with names but this one does look pretty cool so I'm pretty stoked to check that out and yeah that is going to do it for the DVDs like I said I haven't really been picking up a whole lot I've been just very kind of picky on what I've been grabbing I just eh it is what it is so anyways let's get into the Blu-rays after this uh brief little uh clip The girls are ready on her way over right now. God damn it. It's my baby. I'm the mother. Somebody else has to do it. You told me to. You told me. You told me to. I'm not stupid. I know what you told me. She's already on the way. Just do it yourself. Oh, God, I think it knows. Do it. All right. All right. <laughs> oh man, how can you not laugh at that? I'm sorry, but I have like a really dark sense of humor. If that did offend you, I'm sorry. Not really. I don't really care if I offended you, but um, how can you not laugh at that? That's just, it's hilarious. Anyways, let's get into these Blu-rays, guys. Um, I got a pretty decent stack. I got 20-something Blu-rays here. Um, yeah, it's kind of the way my updates have been going. I've been picking up less and less DVDs just because I haven't been... Just most of the stuff I've been wanting has been on Blu-rays, so I don't know. I some I don't really prefer Blu-rays over DVDs, but just for certain releases I do. If that makes any sense. But anyways, yeah. Let's get right into the Blu-rays. Uh, I've been really wanting to upgrade all these films, so they're doing a pretty good job. They've almost got them all out on Blu-ray now. Just because the old full moon transfers of these films are terrible. They're all full screen. They all are pretty muddy. They're all just kind of almost like upgraded VHS transfers. And that is uh, Puppet Master 4, uh, When Bad Puppets Turn Good. Um, I got to say, man, the transfer on this Blu-ray is fantastic. It really does look good. Um, probably the best one out of the four so far. Um, that I've seen the first one is okay. The second one's really good. The third one's even better And this one's even better than those ones. So but two and three are really good transfers I have to say but this one just looks fantastic. Uh, I did watch this the other night still still I, I actually like Puppet Master 4 uh, Directed by Jeff Burr of course who did like uh, Chainsaw 3 Leatherface um, among films and lots of cool stuff, but uh, But yeah, if you're curious about the transfer it looks really damn good. I have to say and yeah, so Puppet Master 4, and of course I had to pick up Puppet Master 5, and I didn't even know this was on Blu-ray. I um, Same with Part 4, I didn't know that they got released because there was no announcement for them. So I was just kind of scrolling through Amazon, I came across Puppet Master 4 and 5, and they were both $9.99 on Blu-ray, and I was like, fuck yeah, I gotta grab them. So um, I've yet to open up Part 5, uh, of course, is Puppets vs. an all-new evil. Um, Again, I believe this was directed by Jeff Burr. I've got a sticker in front of it. I think it is Jeff Burr that directed this one too. But uh, um, yeah, looking forward to the transfer on this because if it's as good as part four, this is going to be pretty much, I mean, $10 with Blu-ray. 
it's worth the upgrade, I guess. Uh, next up from Vinegar Syndrome now, I was happy to, to finally pick up this because again, just like the old DVD, I'm really trying not to upgrade unless the DVDs are horseshit, transfers and stuff. And this is one because it was released by Troma and you know, you got that like kind of full screen VHS transfer of it and it's it's a really cool film. And when I uh, heard that Vinegar Syndrome was released since I had to grab it. So, and that is Pigs. Uh, love this cover art, man. It's really good. Really good cover art. Uh, this was a uh, Video Nasty on the Section 3 list, actually. Um, I'm not really 100% sure why this one made it be, maybe because the father-daughter relationship and things like that that were going on. Um, actually, the guy that directed this film starred in it, and that's his real-life daughter that actually plays in the film, too, uh, which is kind of strange. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is a really weird, odd, kind of 70s... Um, uh, cinema, man. This is just a strange one. Really, really weird, weird film. I, I haven't checked out the transfer on it, but can't wait to check it out. Uh, moving into the uh, Screen Factory releases. Uh, first up here, I picked up Cherry Falls. Now, I was happy to to see that Screen Factory is actually releasing this because I have like the old Region 2 DVD of it. Um, I never grabbed the Region 1 when it came out. I believe it was paired up with Terror Track, um, which I totally missed out on that years ago, and I, I totally regret not looking for it better back then because Terror Track is really hard to find and I like that movie. So, but I did watch Cherry Falls last night and I thought the transfer on this was really good. It looked fantastic. It's still a pretty good film. Like, I don't mind this one. Uh, I kept hearing people say there's like no blood in this film and I couldn't quite remember. I hadn't seen it in years. And no, there's blood in this film. Of course there is. Uh, rest in peace to Brittany Murphy. I think she's really good in this film too, actually. She just has this kind of innocent character that just works. Um, she's kind of made for these type of roles, I guess, but cool film. Um, special features on it. Actually, there's quite a bit of special features on here. There's brand new audio commentary and things like that, too, which is kind of cool, so you can check that out. Uh, next up here is a double feature that I was super stoked when this got announced because this is awesome. I didn't own either one of these films. I've seen both of them, but I didn't own them, and this is just fantastic. And it's Murders in the Room Morgue and The Dunwich Horror. I watched both of them. The, the transfers on both of them are great, really, really great. I reviewed The Dunwich Horror on the podcast. Again, that'll be up on episode 76. Uh, still a really fun film with uh, Dean Stockwell, of course, from uh, Quantum Leap in it. Pretty cool stuff. Um, Murders in the Room Morgue is awesome. I love the scene. I remember the scene when I was a kid watching it about the guy... Uh, the circus goer or whatever, he's doing the trick where he gets buried for three days and when they finally dig him up, <laughs> the, the phantom killer or whatever comes up and just sprays acid in his face. <laughs> it just like, it cracked me up again. I thought that was so funny, but uh, um, yeah, interesting. Pretty cool stuff, man. Really cool double feature. Uh, both these films have commentaries by Steve uh, Haber uh, Haberman, um, which is really cool. So if you want to pause that, you can check if you can see that, but... Yeah, move along with the Scream Factories. We got Species 2. Uh, I did flip the, the art on that because I like this one better than the original one. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff right there. So um, I haven't checked it out yet. This has a lot of features on it too, which is kind of cool. Um, I'm still confused on why they released Species films, but I guess these are probably going to sell for them, I guess. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. Got to figure out how to get part one on Blu ray now. I guess I have them all on DVD, which I'll probably just get rid of my DVDs. But. Yeah, Species 2, haven't checked it out yet. And of course, I grabbed the double feature of Species 3 and 4. And I thought this was quite interesting, actually, because both these movies have their own discs. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, usually they're just on one disc, so that's pretty interesting. Uh, again, got some features, more on Part 3, really nothing on Part 4, which I believe Part 4 was a sci-fi film, if I remember correctly. I remember it sucking really bad, too. Um, I, haven't seen, I haven't watched the Species films in years. So, kind of minorly looking forward to checking those out again. I don't know. Uh, now, this was one I was actually curious to check out again. I believe I bought this DVD and never watched my copy. And, of course, I ended up upgrading to Blu-ray. Um, but I had seen this when it first came out. I remember renting it. And it's called Disturbing Behavior. Now, I did review this on the podcast. And I think I forgot to mention in my review that this is kind of like an American remake of Strange... Uh, Strange Behavior, or Dead Kids, the Australian flick. It's kind of in the vein of that a little bit, so it's kind of what the storyline is. Um, of course, you know, starring James Marsden, Katie Holmes, Nick Stahl. Um, it's pretty fun. I didn't mind this film watching it again. Surprisingly, I didn't mind it. Um, it's very of the times, the music, everything. Now, the ending is just fucking hilarious. It's so much fun. 
I remember when I first watched this movie, I laughed my ass off at the ending, and it still made me howl. And then I realized after that there's an alternate ending on here, so I need I, I should check that out because I mean, if it was anything like the the one that they use in the film. <laughs> so funny. If you if you've seen this film, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's just the way it goes down. It's just you know it's funny. So disturbing behavior, pretty fun. Now, next up here is one of the Screen Factory releases um, in the IFC Midnight um, deal that they have together. And they released a Canadian flick, Hellions, from the director of Pontypool. Now, I was super stoked to check this out because um, I love Pontypool. I've talked about that film many, many times. Lots of updates and other videos and things like that. Um, and I heard a lot of mixed things about this one. A lot of people said it was very boring uh, in the second half of the film. The second half of the film kind of ruined it for them. Um, but, you know, to be honest, I really enjoyed the whole thing. I thought it was great. It starts out fantastic. has a great Halloween atmosphere. Uh, it's got a pretty cool storyline. I think the uh, the little, you know, these little kids on the cover there, they kind of look like um, Sam from Trick or Treat, of course. But I like the storyline in this. I thought it was pretty cool, and I thought it was it was interesting. I think it's a little ambiguous. I think there's certain things that, you know, aren't explained in the film. Um, but with that said, it's not really the worst thing in the world at all. I really enjoyed this film, so give it a shot if you have not checked out Hellions. Uh, I did review this on the podcast also. And last up for the Screen Factory is, is another one I reviewed on the podcast, which I believe is on last week's. Hellions was on there too last week, and Disturbing Behavior. So, yeah, I reviewed like pretty much everything I was just picking up. So, um, is a sci-fi, or no, a chiller film uh, released by Screen Factory called The Boy. Um, now, this movie right here is it's up there with my favorite film with Frankenstein of the Year. I absolutely love this movie. I thought it was really fantastic. Really cool character study of this little boy. Um, you know, I don't want to get into the whole plot of the film, but it's just, it's executed perfectly, in my opinion. I think there's a lot of really cool things going on in this one. Uh, Rain Wilson is in this film also. He kind of, the little boy kind of befriends him um, after the little boy kind of fucks him over, but I don't want to ruin that for you either. And, uh,. <laughs> It's it's cool, man. It, I thought the ending was great too. Really good stuff. But check out the boy. Uh, if you were kind of you know having mixed opinions or mixed feelings about checking out these, I know these Screen Factory chiller and sci-fi and you know um, modern films can be kind of hit and miss, mostly miss in my opinion. But uh, there is some really good ones. So the boy is good. Really enjoyed it. <clears throat> uh, moving along with the the Blu-rays here. Uh, now this is, I finally picked this one up. I got it for a really good price, so I was happy to check this out. I'm a really big fan of Rare Video. I I don't grab everything from Rare, but I do have a pretty big collection of them. And this one right here is called Play Motel. Now I've heard this one sleazy as all shit, so I'm really looking forward to this. I heard there's just a lot of a lot of tits and muff in this one, so that's pretty awesome. But that's kind of what I'm expecting from these Italian. Uh, Giallo-esque. I don't even know if this is a full-on Giallo or if it's more of like just a thriller kind of deal, but I don't know. I love these, I love these, uh, real video releases. Good stuff. Looking forward to checking that out. Uh, this one is not a horror film, but, um, like I said, if you follow my channel, you know that I love Euro crime films. I love Euro crime shit. It's just fantastic. Um, and this one right here is called Killer Cop. I mean, how can you not pick up a film called Killer Cop? Just really, really damn cool. Looking forward to checking this one out. I might even pop this one in after I'm done with this update tonight. Um, yeah, because I've been watching nothing but horror films, so got to break it up every once in a while, but Killer Cop looks really, really cool. Now, this is one of my favorite releases of the year, hands down. Um, I'm so happy that this movie got a release, man. This is just amazing. Uh, this is the type of shit that I get super excited for. Now, I've heard a lot of people say this about this release, but this is exactly why I love collecting. And, and companies like Kino that just start pumping out things like this. It's just amazing. Um, yeah, this is totally cool. And this uh, Monster Dog with Alice Cooper. Um, <laughs> my God, the music in this is so damn catchy. It's just fucking amazing. Directed by Claudio Fergasio, of course. He did Troll 2. Among films... Um, Jesus, man. This thing is just, it's blatantly cheesy as all hell, and it's got some of the greatest music in it, man. Like, like Identity Crisis by Alice Cooper. This movie actually starts out with a music video, but that's kind of the point of it, that they're going to this house to make this music video with Alice Cooper. Um, it's kind of cheesy, but it's super fun, man. Really, really fun film. Couldn't recommend it enough. Big ups to Kino for releasing this, and they just announced The Pit, which I'm super stoked about, so I can upgrade my Anchor Bay DVD. It's pretty awesome. Uh, next up here from 
Grindhouse releasing and this one right here oh my god this is a great release really really fantastic release the transfer oh so good it is so good and that is pieces everyone and their dog has showed this one off so I'm not gonna do an unboxing or anything for it but um yeah I didn't get the puzzle with this one I pre-ordered from Amazon and uh finally got my copy and no I didn't get a I did not get a uh, a puzzle but I'm not one of those anal collectors where I'm going to go out of my way and, and spend $100 on a puzzle that's going to sit inside the case on my shelf. I just don't really see the point in that. So, I mean, I was taking a gamble if I got one. You know, that would have been cool if I didn't. Whatever. It's not a big deal. So, uh, but, you know, it's more about the film for me and just seeing this movie in its high-def glory and it looks fantastic. Um, I know other people have mentioned, too, that it looks so good that you can see, like, you know, the mistakes in it, like the knife bending on the head and, you know, among things. But, uh, man, the gore in this is just, I forgot how good it was. And then you see it in this high def glory and you're just like, damn, the scene in the elevator. Holy shit, man. It looks so good, man. Really, really good. Um, it's a really good film. Pieces is a good film. I know we'd reviewed this one on the podcast a long time ago, but really good stuff. And it also comes with the documentary 40 Stre 42nd Street Memories, which is just fantastic. I love that documentary. Really good stuff, of course, with the interviews from, well, they're just talking about 42nd Street, uh, which is no longer there anymore, of course. Um, you know, with Bill, William, uh, William Lustig, Larry Cohen, Frank Henlotter. Love hearing Frank Henlotter talk, man. It's just fantastic. But all the cool stories of, you know, 42nd Pete talking about 42nd Street and like just all the, just all the different uh, the cinemas that are just so scummy and all the, the, you know, the people used to get jumped and stabbed and just all the shit that went on down. It just seemed like a, an amazing time. I wish I was alive when that was going on and stuff, but, um, yeah, really cool stuff, but yeah, pieces and yeah. So moving along, got a couple of non horror pickups here. Uh, I had to grab this one cause I had the DVD and I have part two and three on Blu-ray for some reason, I just didn't, I hadn't upgraded this one yet. And as Batman Begins, um, I found it in the dump in the other day, so I had to grab it. I was like, whatever. Uh, like I said, I have, you know, the part two and three on Blu-ray. Um, but, so I can get rid of my DVD now. Yeah, Batman Begins, great film. <laughs> now, this was just one of the releases of the year for me, man. This is so awesome. This is released by Shout Factory. And I almost shit my pants when they announced this because I love, love this movie. It's just so blatantly violent and wicked. It's just a ridiculous premise, man. Invasion USA, big upgrade for my DVD. This is totally cool to have. Fuck, I watched this. I just had a blast with it again. Man, I love Chuck Norris. Like, I mean, I pretty much have all of Chuck Norris movies. I just love them. It's just so badass. Um, but this one right here just has some of the most blatant scenes, like the, the shootout in the... Uh, in the mall, oh, it's just ridiculous, man. Some of the things that happen in this film are just outrageous, man. Just brings a smile to your face that these movies, this is what the 80s was about. Canon, God bless Canon for making this shit, but yeah, good stuff. And of course, I had to pick up this from Shelf because I had the shitty DVD of this, um, Missing in Action 3, which is uh, called Braddock. Um, I haven't watched this movie in years, actually, to be honest, but... Uh, um, I mean, I like Missing in Action Part 1 and 2, or if you want to call Part 2 is 1 and 1 and 2, <laughs> whatever. They're all fucked up, but, uh, yeah, cool stuff. More Chuck Norris glory high up. And, uh, grab one of these, man. I, I thought the price was wrong. I was in Best Buy the other day, and these things were usually selling for, like, twenty four ninety nine kind of deal, but the price said nine ninety nine, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna grab this. I should have grabbed the other copies, too, just to give out to my friends. Um, because this is my second favorite Arnie movie, and I, and I'm not a big steelbook person, but I was like, fuck it, I'm grabbing this. And this is uh, Total Recall, uh, the Mondo uh, steelbook. And it was $9.99, and I was like, i got to grab this. And this is the one with the, the brand new transfer. It does look good. I watched this the other night. Uh, it looks great, actually. It looks really, really good. Um, but it's still such an amazing, amazing film. Uh, yeah, just I love this movie. I love watching The Running Man and Total Recall back-to-back. -back. Those are my two favorite Arnie films. Um, not saying they're the best. I say those are my personal favorite Arnie films, so don't get all butthurt. Um, but, yeah, so, yeah, cool stuff. Um, moving into some Arrow stuff. First up, got uh, Rage of Honor. Absolutely love this movie. So good. Um, goes great with Prey of Death, which came out last month. Grab that one, too. And, uh, of course, I got the Enter of the Ninja and Revenge of the Ninja 2 from Kino a couple months back, too. So, all these Shoguchi films are just... <laughs> It's so great, all these films are getting released. Now I just want to see uh, uh, Revenge, um, not Revenge of the Ninja, uh, Nine Deaths of a Ninja come out. Um, there's a couple other ones too that need releases, but uh, yeah, 
really, really good stuff. This is the alternate cover to it, if you're wondering. I, I don't know why it shows that one. It's kind of gaudy, but it's kind of cool. I think it's the original. That is the original right there. Looking forward to the Zero Boys. Got to grab that one. Never, I don't know anything about that movie, man. So it just looks, sounds really cool. But uh, Rage of Honor. And of course, I finally got in my copy after like eight weeks in the post. Thank you, mail. <laughs> Canada Post is fucking awesome. No, I think what happens is everything that comes from the UK gets stuck in customs for like five or six weeks. It, it only takes a couple days to get there. I wait forever. Finally, after eight weeks, finally got the mutilator in. Watch this. Transfer's fucking amazing. It looks really good. And I watched a lot of the features. I watched the brand new uh, uh, documentary called Fall Breakers, Story of the Mutilator. Really good stuff. T t it goes through the whole making of it. Interviews with a lot of, of course, with um, the directors uh, and some of the cast members and stuff. And telling stories and they go through the effects and the effects that didn't work. And, you know, <laughs> a really, really good documentary, though. I'm glad that they, you know, they delayed this release to put that on there because it's a good feature. So, but really amazing release. Uh, I really do like the the alternate art for for the mutilator which is fall break really cool stuff and they even talk about how this movie played in, on 42nd street for like a long time and shit pretty cool stuff great release and last up for the update um is going to be the uh the hellraiser uk region 2 box set now i didn't pick up the scarlet box one because it was so expensive and i heard right away that they were going to be releasing um, just a standardized version of it. Basically, this is the same box set, but it doesn't come with the booklet. And I think that's really it. I think that's the only difference. The packaging, of course, is different. I actually prefer this type of box set. You know, the real sturdy box sets and then everything in their own keep cases. Not like those kind of cardboard ones. Um, I did reverse all the arts to the the original ones. Hellraiser. I did watch this. thought Transfer was fantastic on it. And this also comes with the, uh, the documentary Leviathan. So... And the thing is, I'm pretty sure I didn't know that. So when I got this and I looked on it and I looked at the back and it said Leviathan on there, I was like, damn, that's really fucking cool. Good documentary, really cool stuff. It just, it's a lot of praising of Clive Barker, how he's like a genius and stuff like that. But it's more about the making of the film and how the, the ideas of Hellraiser came about and like, you know, the, the early graphics of Pinhead and what he was going to look like and just all the Cenobites and things. Really cool stuff. Really interesting. Thought it was really cool. Um, but good transfer. And then Hellbound. Uh, again, packed with, uh, um, yeah, features and stuff. It's, it looks like the Leviathan's on here, too. That's interesting. Didn't even know that, but, yeah. Hellbound, and, of course, Hellbound, Hellbound 3. Fuck, Hell on Earth, Hellraiser 3. Um, yeah. Oh, there's actually a making of the movie on here, too. That's really cool. So, yeah, cool features on here. Can't go wrong. And this was cheap, man. I actually used some arrow points, and I, I got this thing for, like, really, really cheap. I only paid, like, 14 pounds for it or something like that. So, that's a pretty damn good deal, man. So, um, but, yeah, that's going to do it for the update. Like I said, not a huge update this month, but I think pretty much everything in here is quality. Um, yeah. So, I will see you guys next month, and it'll probably roughly be about the same. I already... I didn't receive, of course, a lot of my stuff that was supposed to be in this update, so I guess it would have been a little bit bigger. Um, of course, some things from the UK, Arrow stuff, um, and a few other things that just got back-ordered on my Amazon and things like that. All the normal shit that always happens to me. It's just, you know, the same old fucking sob story. <laughs> um, but, yeah, anyways, that is going to do it for the update, guys. I will check you next month at the end of April. Um, and this is probably going to be uploaded on April 1st, so happy fucking April Fool's Day. Peace out, homies.